This is the Paul J. Deutschman Award for Excellence in Research. Um, the award's namesake uh, was, quote, a central force in the movement to study journalism and mass communication scientifically, uh, which clearly fits. Lee's, Lee's research could not be more central to this, this association. Um, unlike many of us who simply worry about the future of journalism, Lee is actually doing something about it and has been for his entire career, starting uh, as a journalist way back, way back when. Um, his research on the sociology. Let <laughs> <laughs> me, let me. The one of the first, first, first barbs of the evening. Is is there? Is it just me, or has Lee not aged over his entire? It's the Dick Clark of aging. <laughs> Lee's research has evolved and changed over a period of four decades, as you would expect. Uh, but a number of qualities, I think, have remained faithful companions to him. Devotion to understanding journalism's democratic mission, which Doug was mentioning. Uh, commitment to conceptual and methodological rigor. Faith in empirical discovery and a sociological imagination. Where Lee, the organizer, really shown, however, was on the social side. This man was constantly plotting events. Uh, we had a volleyball team from which I, ha I still have a few minor injuries. Uh, there was a string of beverage tasting parties. We tasted wine, we tasted beer, we tasted champagne. And if you've ever done a tasting party with a social scientist, it's not quite the same thing as you know, sitting down with a bunch of drunks and deciding what you like. We had forms to fill out. <laughs> All of the beverages were in uh, unidentifiable bags. Um, you know, it was, and, and we responded to things like, what comes to mind when you drink this? <laughs> How does this beer make you feel? <laughs> or I love this one, is this beer? We had several. admire <laughs> about Lee in his work is two things, the most, I have to admit. Two things, first of all, that had something that has been mentioned already. It's uh, the, uh, the passion, the uh, kind of the, the drive to uh, work for democracy, even to save it. And, uh, the second um, feature of yours, characteristic of yours, that I've admired much is your international orientation. It, it shows in so many different facets, I'm tempted to say. International publications, publications in foreign languages authors that are from foreign <coughs> countries, visits to foreign countries, comparative research, including foreign countries. All this is international research. This is really wonderful, and it's full of respect for, for other cultures. And I have a memory of working on that chapter for Sid Krause's book uh, that reveals just how keen Lee's mind is, I think. Um, I was reading some correlations to him over the telephone. No, no email then. Uh, and uh, in the middle of reading those correlations, Lee said to me, that can't be right. <laughs> he, was, he was entering the correlations, I think. And he realized that one of those correlations could not be true because he was comparing you know, the correlations between 1 and 3, 1 and 2, 2 and 3 as he went. And it turned out that in fact, there was an error in the SPSS program that I was using to calculate those correlations. And it was actually fixed after that. But I was always impressed that, that he could do that right on the spot, right, right on the phone. So in many cases, we would, uh, we have a lot to worry about them because this is the, the dawn of the field in a way. And so we're how to proceed to identify interactions with non-experimental data, for example. And uh, quite often we wouldn't agree, and uh, we would say, oh, no, 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 no. you're wrong. <laughs> and at that point, we'd ride our bicycles home together, and we talked about a lot of things. We're not that serious all the time. Uh, some of life flows as much. Uh, but uh, so we'd keep go to the student housing, and I go to the faculty housing, and come back, and I said, in the meantime, I think, oh, you know, he's got some good points there. I, <laughs> <laughs> I meet Lee the next morning and say, 
I think you are. <laughs> so we, we, it was very productive in that sense, and so we usually split the difference. Well, Lee, I hope that you are, uh, you are relaxed today when I'm speaking, because I remember what happened 14 years ago, and I haven't shared with you this before. Uh, Lee invited me uh, shortly after my arrival in Athens to be a part of the annual surveys, and then he said, you know, you you might be interested in giving the enrollment survey presentation. Well, um, that was not my, exactly my expertise, giving speeches in English about American education. <laughs> so, uh, I think we did some gambling. And I remember that uh, when I started speaking, it was a pretty rocky start. The words were not coming out. And I looked at Lee and I saw in his eyes all the sadness of the world. I mean... <laughs> take a little time today to pull back the curtain on the real <laughs> So Marky went to Lexington where his pharmaceutical ambitions did not survive freshman chemistry. And his Wheatnik roommate suggested he consider journalism as an alternative. And so he went over there, fell in love with it, and by his senior year he was the uh, editor of the Kentucky Colonel, right in the middle of all of the campus unrest and the Vietnam War protests. And Lee took very strong editorial stances, which made the president of the university very unhappy with him and the governor of the state of Kentucky even unhappy. Uh, Lee, the program says uh, that you're the featured speaker, uh, so I think it's time for you to get back at all these people. <laughs> Thank you. 